Welcome to this week's edition of Sun News Blazer Beat. I'm Zoe Hansen. And I'm Troy Grimmin. Thanks for tuning in. Breaking news, the Utah Tech women's basketball coach is currently under investigation for alleged misconduct. J.D. Gustin is being investigated for the use of obscenities and in insulting the athletes, humiliation in front of the team, silent treatment, and threats of revoking scholarships. Eleven women spoke out about this in interviews with the Salt Lake Tribune. While the investigation is still ongoing, updates will be posted on sunnewsdaily.com. After the break, we will be back with your weekly sports updates. It's official. Dixie State University is now Utah Tech University. Our polytechnic focus combines active learning with career readiness in all of our 250 programs. As one of the fastest growing, most affordable, and safest universities in the country, Utah Tech was recently ranked as a top 10 arts and science college. So join us and experience the difference at Utah Tech University. Home field shutout, the Utah Tech women's soccer team took the lead by a single goal in the 65th minute of the game against Portland State University. Throughout the game, sophomore goalkeeper Brianna Fry led the defense and saved five out of five shots on goal. Last year, Fry appeared in three matches with a total of 270 minutes and made her save record of seven against Seattle University. This year, she already beat her record with 12 saves against Gonzaga University. In the first half, Portland State had the advantage of nine shots. Then in the second half, the team turned it around and forced three saves. The name to note is Lacey Fox. Let's take a look at Fox's winning goal. It started with a shot from senior McKinley Barney, which was bumped off by the opposing goalkeeper. Then freshman Michelle Rodriguez put the ball back into play and sent it to Fox for the header and the win. The team celebrated the goal as they gathered around Fox. The team knew this goal was crucial for the win. Conquering new turf, the Utah Tech's men's soccer team dominated Lindenwood University on the road with a shutout of 3-0. Freshman Austin Wallace scored his first goals as a trailblazer and recorded two of the three on Sunday. Junior Bryce Backlund recorded for the third goal for the Trailblazers, and the team kept the lead and their cool as they didn't record any yellow cards this game. On the other hand, Lindenwood had two yellow cards. The Blazers are back at home tonight facing off against CSU Bakersfield. It is the Stampede game of the week, so make sure to go cheer them on at 7 p.m. in the Greater Zion Stadium. The home advantage slips in the home opener against Fresno State. The Utah Tech volleyball team fell short in both games. In the first game, the Trailblazers won the opening set and dropped the other three sets. The second day was more intense as the team played five sets against the Bulldogs. The Blazers won the opening and the third set, but lost in the second, fourth, and final set of the game. The Blazers finished with a 3-2 loss. Let's look at the highlights and leaders of this game. Kennedy Knudsen led the team in kills with a total of 18. Sisters Tyla and M Mia Lafiso both recorded double-digit digs as well as Emma Ricks and Knudsen. It all came down to the last set, and the Blazers unfortunately could not come out on top. Good to be back on the links. The Blazers women's golf team is on the road for the Timpanogos Collegiate Invitational in Provo. The Blazers, although lacking in numbers, rallied to take 12th place in the Invitational. 19 teams entered into the tournament. Notable California teams like Santa Clara and Fresno State finishing in the top five. The Blazers shot 11 over par, beating Southern Utah University by four strokes and falling just short of beating out the University of California Irvine team, which shot 10 over par. Overall, a pretty impressive outing from the Blazers as they prepare for the Big Sky 54 tournament, September 25th. Always room for improvement. The Blazers fell short in their home opener 43-13 against the formidable Montana Grizzlies team. The stat line mirrored the Montana State game the Grizzlies having 150 more rushing yards than the Blazers. On the other hand, the Blazers had 115 more receiving yards than the Grizzlies. A major downside that befell our Blazers was the number of turnovers, one of them being an interception in the first five minutes of the game, although the Blazers didn't score until the fourth quarter. The two touchdowns thrown by Kobe Tracy were flashes of a potentially dangerous offense. Let's take a look at them now. Starting off, we have a play-action red zone pass from Kobe Tracy to senior captain Ricky Johnson. And if we look at Johnson's route, you can see he makes a quick break to get inside his defender and catches a dime from Tracy. But if we're talking about dimes, it doesn't get much better than this bomb to Keith Davis. Tracy steps back into a clean pocket and puts it right on the money. And Davis makes a Superman dive to secure the catch. Now, if we revisit the goal line touchdown, take a close look at number five. 
This is why the run game is as equally as important as the pass game. This fake run caused number five on the Grizzlies' eyes to stay glued on the backfield, allowing Tracy an easy pass to an open Ricky Johnson. Overall, this was a very smart play call by Paul Peterson and beautiful execution by the Blazers' offense. The Blazers have a bounce back game at Northern Arizona University Saturday in foreign territory. So, Zoe, obviously there was a lot of flashes of greatness last football game, but the one thing that is perplexing me the most is probably the amount of turnovers we had. Four turnovers, one interception in the first five minutes of the game, plus our starting QB dilemma. I mean, we threw a Boone Abbott in for the first half of the game and then put in Kobe Tracy for the second half. I want to know your thoughts on that. They had, um, they had a really good, like, they had really good plays. And like you said, the four turnovers was crucial. You know, maybe if they didn't have those four turnovers, this game would have been really close. Um, so I think, yeah, like changing up the, the QBs, that was probably not the, their best move. Um, like we saw Keith Davis, he had a great play. They keep having great plays, but they need to put it all together. Like I said, the four turnovers, it's crucial. We need to not have as many in the game. Now, my other question that I've been asking myself, though, is Kobe Tracy the answer for this offense? I mean, he played very well coming into the second half. No, no digs on Boone Abbott. He secured himself as the starting QB, and he's a great player. But, I mean, Kobe Tracy has shown flashes of greatness for this offense. I mean, although he is a great player and he's doing a lot for our offense, we need more than just one athlete to be carrying our offense. We need a whole offensive team. And while he is a great player, he needs to have – they need to have four great players up there, you know. That will make us very, very – intimidating to other teams. Also, another fun fact. Did you know that we set a student record of attendance in the last football game? 2,291, I believe. I think the first time uh, in D1 history since, sorry, pardon me, since we went D1 that we set that record. So yeah. that's something pretty cool to take out of it. Yeah, and we'll hear more about that in a few minutes. We'll be back after the break. Discover the challenge your soul has been seeking. Where the lore of triumph rings through time and space. Where limits are transformed, champions are crowned, and legends are made. The land of endurance is calling. Rise to it. As we previously mentioned, Utah Tech students broke the student attendance record of sporting events with over 2,000 students showing up to the football home opener. But how much do they actually know about our Division I teams? I asked students around campus Trailblazer Athletics cri trivia questions. How many points Here's what they had Utah, to say. How many points did, the Utah, did Utah Tech lose to SUU in the WAC men's basketball tournament? One, three, or two? Um, one. You're right, they only lost by one point. And who currently holds the battle axe? Utah Tech or SUU? Utah Technical University. How many home games does the volleyball team have this season? Eight, 10, or 12? 10. It's actually 12. Oh. <laughs> who had more yellow cards last season? Women's soccer or men's soccer? Um, I'm gonna guess women's soccer. It's actually men's soccer. Okay. Who won more games last semester, baseball or softball? Softball. You're right, it was Go. softball. <laughs> Let's go softball. I thought the questions were going to be more challenging, but the majority of them knew their stats about Trailblazer athletics. Now that we are done talking about Trailblazer sports, sports for the week, my co-host Zoe and I wanted to put our own sports skills to the test. Let's take a look at how Zoe and I's best of five pickleball match went. What up, Blazer Nation? Uh, we're here in lovely Washington, Utah, here at these prestigious pickleball courts where I'm going to absolutely slam Zoe Hansen into the ground in a best of five pickleball match. Was that a threat? No, threat. I mean, I'm everything he said happen. is a lie. It's not true. I'm going to dominate this court. I speak nothing it's, but the truth. He's not even going to get a score point. I'm very Bet silk. on it. I'm very silk with my words. Bet on I it. I choose them very carefully. I'm going to win. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. Put it here. Game time. Zero zero. About to be one zero. First back end. Gonna drop it. Ah. Oh, that's nothing. That's All right, nothing. we drop first round. That's, that's my fine. point. That's my point. We gotta show a little bit of respect to the opponent by dropping first hand. 
on this moment. Oh, well. Hey, players are faithful. You're about to see the greatest comeback. He wishes. He wishes. Four of. That's out. That's in. It is. Yes. about the ultimate look of defeat with you laying on the ground oh. after you lost 5-0. I know! All I gotta say, all I gotta say is that a variety of things went wrong with that day, <laughs> no. okay? Number one, the weather was awful, all right? There was awful weather. Number two, when I went to bed that night, I sleep at a 68 degree temperature. My room was 67 degrees, okay? Number three, I was playing in Vans, okay? I was not prepared for this no, game. That's I was, all I'm gonna no, say. No, I was playing in Nikes. We were playing in the same exact weather on the same exact courts with the same exact pickleball paddles. So Look, you got nothing. All I gotta and say- one degree does not make a difference. All I gotta say is don't judge my story by the chapter you just dropped in on, all right? I'm gonna be back for the next segment and I'm gonna pick up a win, okay? I'm gonna no. bring this back. No, that's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna let that happen. <laughs> And that's it for this week's edition of Sun News Blazer Beat. We'll see you here next week, same time, same place. Have a great week, Trailblazers.